Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Greetings. My name is Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thanks for tuning in for this time of worship. Um, our scripture for today is Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, with the other two wings they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the, sound of their door, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, for I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my lips and said, your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. When I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your word. We give you thanks for your presence in our midst. We give you thanks for the opportunity we have to dive into this a little bit today and hear your word speak to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, greetings. I'm not sure exactly when you're tuning in to listen to this. As I recorded, this is Memorial Day weekend. So uh, in part of the scripture, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Uh, and I, I pray that uh, if you've served in one of our armed services, that your day will be blessed. We thank you for your service uh, and for those who have gone before us. So uh, interesting phrase in in this passage where Isaiah says woe to me or woe is me I am ruined 
It's interesting to me because he says that in response to this great vision. He has this dream, this vision of the seraphs and the throne and uh, all of this pageantry taking place. And and Isaiah's reaction to all of the the seraphs say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Uh, All of that and, and Isaiah's response to that is, whoa or woe is me, or I'm ruined. Uh, it's, it's just interesting that he goes there because it doesn't seem that that would warrant woe. It doesn't seem that it would warrant uh, fear or anxiety, uh, but God's presence ought to invoke joy and hope. So diving into that a little bit, though, it's interesting uh, on this uh, whole idea of woe. Uh, There's a book out uh, a few years ago called Woe Is I, and the subtitle is The Grammar Phobes Guide to Better English in Plain English. And the writer says about this phrase, woe is me or woe to me, uh, shouldn't it be woe am I, or better yet even, I am woe. (laughs) Uh, The book became a bestseller and uh, so much so that they published a second uh, version of it called Woe Is I Junior uh, for elementary kids. And so might be a good uh, thing to look up. There's also a band that's called Woe Is Me. It's a, an American metalcore band that's uh, based right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Woe Is Me does not mean the same thing as me and woe are one and the same thing, but rather it's woe is to me or woe is unto me or woe has come upon me. Uh, it's, it's more of a feeling uh, than a descriptive word. And so uh, th- that's become a thing actually in the uh, uh, modern vernacular. Uh, there's a thing called woe is meing. Woe is meing. Um, and it's a new phrase. Uh, and it would be used maybe in this way I am getting so tired of Bob's woe is meing all the time. Um, you know people like that, don't you? They're, they're, they, they take anything and spin it to the negative. Uh, here's something that's happened, and oh my gosh, this is ha- and they just go off that way. Why is it that some folks just move just about anything to some sort of negative place? And, and so with Isaiah, this is a grand, exciting vision, wouldn't you think? So why is Isaiah woe is me? What's got him so woeful? Uh, why the long face? Well, as, as you can imagine, it's not just one thing. It's a whole bunch of things uh, that uh, have been going on with Isaiah that's kind of led up to this event. Uh, I'm, a, I'm assuming, I don't know, didn't really uh, have a chance to talk to him about all this. Uh, Isaiah, as it says in the first chapter and first verse, is the son of Amoz. Uh, and Isaiah was a prophet uh, for four kings. Um, he, he lived a long time. And so in verse 1 of our, our scripture, it says that in the year that King Uzziah died. And so that, that does conjure up some woefulness, doesn't it? Uzziah was a great king by all accounts for 52 years. And so anytime there's a change, so that means most of the people that are alive, uh, uh, Uzziah's been the king over them. And so there is some anxiety around that. What's going to happen? Who's going to be the next king? Are they going to be good? Will they reign a long time? Uh, Are they going to be helpful? Um, But the problem was that the successor of Uzziah was his son, Jotham. And not many people had a lot of confidence in Jotham. And, and part of the struggle was that Assyria was poised on the northern borders uh, with a large army to come in and attack Israel. Uh, and, um, and that had people pretty woeful, pretty uh, uh, restless, pretty anxious, because they didn't feel like Jotham was a good match uh, to lead the kingdom forward. Um, 
So anytime there's a time of transition like that, it, it is a time, well, what's going to happen? Where am I going to fit in that? How is this all going to look? How is it going to affect me? It's a time of anxiety. It's much like the time of anxiety we're uh, experiencing right now in this country. An election's coming up. What's going to happen if this side wins? What's, what's going to happen if that side wins? What's going to happen? We're, we're not sure. We're anxious. We're a little bit uh, fearful, maybe. We're, we're wondering how this is all going to play out. So suffice it to say, uh, Isaiah is anxious. He is in woe. Also, in this first verse of the sixth chapter, it says that in the year that King Uzziah died, um, and so that year, Uzziah's death wasn't sudden, um, which kind of heightened the anxiety. He had leprosy, which you find out about back in 2 Kings chapter 15. And so he's been sick for a long time. People know this transition is coming. They've been anxious. Is he still alive? Is he doing well? Does he have another six months? Does he have a year? Does he have a day? Well, what's his prognosis? What's going to happen? So people have been on the edge for a while, and that leads to sort of a, a, a mindset that maybe is not all that, that healthy. It wears you down. Um, so Israel has been pondering the what-ifs for a long time. So with that background, Isaiah has this dream. And the dream is out of this anxiousness. Uh, God is sitting on a throne. It's a grand vision, powerful, magnificent. Uh, the seraphs are in attendance. The seraphs call, uh, part of the dream is to reinforce this idea of God's power and might and holiness. The earth is full of God's glory. Um, and so the, the seraphs come, they're flapping their wings, the doorposts are shaking. Uh, maybe it is a little unsettling. Um, it, it, again, it's not unlike our time. There's a lot of things to unsettle us. The, the government, the economy, uh, the election, maybe relationships, maybe our own health, uh, maybe a decision, that uh, direction that we're headed in. Maybe it's our spiritual life that has us a, a little restless. So we get all of this is happening. This vision happens and so Isaiah's response to all of that, his initial response is in the presence of God, not to feel joy. And again, that's, that's a little uh, puzzling because if there is a lot of anxiety, a lot of unknown, the presence of God ought to usher in a sense of peace, <laughs> wouldn't you think? Uh, but Isaiah goes right to his sin. I am a sinful person. I've done some bad things, and I live among the people who've done some bad things. Uh, and it, it, it seems like that anxiety, that tension is right there on the edge. Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, he says. I live among the people of unclean yet lips. And so this presence of God is not a joyful thing, it's a, it's a difficult thing. It reminds me, kind of a pet peeve that I have, of the, the signs you see all around towns. It says, Jesus is coming. Repent. What? Jesus is coming, so be afraid. Jesus is coming, so hide. Jesus is coming, lock your doors. Jesus is coming, uh, uh, shut off the browser on your computer. Jesus is coming, do something to, hide, to get away. It shouldn't be that way at all, should it? Jesus is coming, celebrate. Jesus is coming, rejoice. That should be good news, not bad news. But yet we, we try to spin things to, oh, it's going to be bad. Oh, it's, it's not going to be good. I, I just don't see that anywhere in the Gospels. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's a, that's a word of hope. Jesus is coming. God has come to earth and it's a good thing. John 16, says, Be at peace, for I have overcome the world. Again, a blessing. John 12, 47, I didn't come to judge the world, so relax. I have come to save the world. So it's interesting in this passage 
that uh, God doesn't give up on us. When we react negatively, when God comes all excited, hey, I'm home, I'm here, uh, and we run away, God doesn't go, well, dang, that was disappointing, and, and walk off. God continues to pursue. Look what he does here with Isaiah. He senses Isaiah's fear. He senses Isaiah's shame and guilt and, and uh, uh, repentance and um, uh, anxiety, his woefulness, his woe is me. Uh, and so the seraph picks up a, a coal from the altar and he takes it over and he touches Isaiah's lips with it. And he says, your sins are atoned for. Be clean, be healed, have hope. So God before, recognizes that before he can have a conversation with Isaiah, uh, he's got to come and uh, offer grace and a word of hope and say, it's going to be okay. You know, it's interesting that all through the Old and New Testament, it seems that whenever the angels or God shows up, the first word out of their mouth is, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Uh, because they recognize that when they show up, we're afraid. Why is that? Why is it that we post a sign, Jesus is coming, repent. Instead of Jesus is coming, celebrate. It's, it's good news. It's not bad news. So Isaiah is, is uh, visited by God. He struggles with his sin, his unworthiness, his lack. He doesn't feel like he's worthy to stand in the presence of God, but God comforts him. Just like Jesus touches the leper. In the story where uh, Jesus heals the leper, the thing that the lepers don't get is the touch. They're, they're, they're unclean, so they have to tell people, stay away, stay away. But Jesus touched, could have healed him in a hundred different ways, but he touches him. That's powerful. He comes to, to Thomas and says, touch my um, scars. He comes to Peter on the coastline after Peter has denied him and run away uh, to find him there, to bring him back. Uh, Jesus' presence isn't something to be afraid of. But we... We shy away from God because of our sin, our pride, our anger, our acting out, our addiction, our lust. And we do the one thing we should never do, and that's run from God. Oh, we've got to hide instead of turning to God and embracing him. So Jonah, Isaiah, Peter, Paul all do the same thing at one time or another, run from God. Instead of seeing this restlessness, this woe, uh, as a stirring from God to uh, draw us close, we've been conditioned to think that somehow it's all our fault and we've done something wrong and we're not worthy of God's love and grace. And the truth is, yes, we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God, but that's what Jesus' work on the cross is all about, to restore us. We're not worthy through our own work. We're worthy because of what God does in and through each of us. And so as, a, uh, as this comes to a, a finality, a climax, we find this great line in verse 8. After Isaiah has had this encounter, after he's initially stepped back, after he's experienced this grace of God, God says, now who will go for me? Who shall I send? And Isaiah says, I'll go. I can do this. I can do this now because he's seen God in a different way. He's, he's embraced this. God has uh, healed him of his uh, anxiety, of his woefulness. I wonder if we spend as much time turning towards God as we do running from God, how much different the world around us would be. I'm, I'm thankful this Memorial Day uh, that we have a time to honor those who have served this country, both that have uh, already passed through this life and those of you that are still um, uh, with us and, uh, and celebrating this day. That uh, so over the years, so many brave men and women, uh, when they have heard this call, uh, to serve have stepped up and not had all the answers, but said, I'm willing to go. Who will go? Send me. Send me. I will go. You know, God is, God's not trying to catch us. 
at some nefarious action, God is love, and in him there is no darkness at all. Now, I know you might not have some grand vision like is recorded here in Isaiah, but all of us, all of us, experience the presence of God. Sometimes we acknowledge it. Sometimes we're, it's, it's very clear. Sometimes it's not so clear. But God is all around us, in us, with us, all the time. My prayer is that you'll move towards that. You'll embrace it. You know, I saw it on a sign, Jesus is coming, so celebrate. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy, guiding us, leading us, wooing us, touching our lips, embracing us, helping us to see your grace and love and power. Open us to all that you do. Guide us this day. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. <laughs>